Tolstoy image of 1866 and 1867 and 1868 and 1869 runs up against the idea that the federal government, which is supporting the rights of black Americans in the American South, is a socialistic government. The idea that the government is protecting formerly enslaved people in the American South costs money because you have to pay the officers of the Freedmen's Bureau and you have to pay rations and, and you're trying to support this population. And former Confederate Democrats insisted that this was a form of socialism. And they start in 1871 using the word socialism and they contrast that with the American cowboy. Cowboys, a third of the cowboys were men of color. They depended on the US government for things like buying their cattle at Fort Sumner but, and elsewhere. They depended on the, the industry, on the federal government to fight indigenous Americans. They depended on the federal government for the railroads that moved the cattle out of the plains. But they insisted in those documents, in the newspapers, that the cowboys were independent of the government. They were white young men who only wanted to work hard and not to be interfered with. And that idea of the cowboy standing against an active government that protected black rights is one that dominated the, the late 19th century. We have Buffalo Bill performing as himself in uh, a Ned Buntline story in 1872. By 1883, he has started Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. Very quickly, he is essentially the Beyonce of the late 19th century, <laughs> which I kind of love, because if you listen carefully, you can hear him spinning in his grave. And, um, <laughs> and that becomes, of course, goes to the point where it becomes the very first motion picture with the great train robbery, which if you watch that on YouTube, you will see see, you don't understand what's happening unless you read the, the captions, but it is a set piece from Wild West shows. It's not just Buffalo Bills, there are other Wild West shows as well. So, um, so that image is really important throughout the 19th century. And then when the, the, the planes really go into real trouble in the early 20th century and then after World War I, that image falls off the face of the earth. We get the Marlboro Man, but he is an image of poverty and sorrow, not what he becomes, the guy on the white horse. He dies of lung cancer. That's, I'm not making that up. And he is, his, his spread in life is about how miserable his life is. There are no cowboy movies made during World War II. They're all buddy movies and community movies. And then the cowboy makes a dramatic reappearance in the United States after the Brown versus Board of Education decision of 1954. And that's when we get Bonanza and Rawhide and The Lone Ranger. And I believe there are nine of them at one point on primetime TV. And, and of course, Bonanza is the first television show in color. It goes all the way around the world. And embedded in that image is that idea of standing against this socialistic government that is protecting the rights of people of color. So that image, that cowboy image that is associated with, with Texas especially, um, became so deeply embedded in our American political system during Reconstruction that it was able to reappear in the 1950s and of course was a symbol on which Ronald Reagan rose to the White House um, to overturn that government that he said was a form of, of creeping socialism. Well, do you think political leaders were actually deliberately pushing? 100%. The television, okay. TV shows? There's this guy named Barry Goldwater. And, and those of you who don't know to whom I'm referring, Barry Goldwater was an Arizona senator who was actually a trust fund baby, but his grandparents had been immigrants to Arizona uh, before it became a state when it was still a territory. And they were dry goods people, uh, clothing, uh, they were part of a clothing store, and they actually made a ton of money because the federal government was pouring so much money into Arizona, into the dams in Arizona during the Depression. But he actually gave a number of interviews and talked a lot about how he came to Arizona when everybody did it on their own. They didn't need welfare, didn't need no welfare state. I'm sorry, I made that up. That was later. But, um, but they didn't, you know, nobody protected their water, nobody protected their labor, and he, he very deliberately did that. And he was a very handsome man, and he shows up in life early on in the white cowboy hat, and he becomes known as a, as a cowboy. <laughs> 